determine whether the first six deployments out of eight were successful or not over the nets. Now, the last two deployments in that first sequence will happen during a telemetry blackout period. So we'll have to confirm those a few minutes later when we regain signal. We'll have a little bit more about both the customers and their payloads later on in the webcast. And if you're interested in reviewing the full deployment schedule, check that out at SpaceX.com. Now, we are just about T plus 13 and a half minutes away from liftoff. Despite how it looks, the weather on the range is actually fantastic for a launch today. The range and vehicle are continuing to look go for launch as well as our payloads. But if for some reason we don't have a launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow, Saturday, May 20th at 6.15 a.m. Pacific time. Now on the screen, you can barely make it out with that shadow in the middle is Falcon 9. It's a two-stage rocket that stands about 230 feet tall. It will hold just about a million pounds of propellant when fully fueled. Now, we began loading those propellants on both the stages at the T-minus 35-minute mark. At the very top of the rocket, we've got a nose cone structure called the fairing. It's 17 feet in diameter, and it's housing the 21 satellites that we're flying today. The fairing's job is to protect the satellites from aerodynamic heating loads and contamination during the ascent phase of the mission. Once we reach the vacuum of space, the fairing has done its job, so we'll actually jettison them back to planet Earth while the second stage continues to its final destination in low Earth orbit. Now, again, we will have two deployment sequences during today's mission. The first deployment sequence will deploy all five of the Iridium satellites and the second one will deploy, uh, excuse me, and the first six OneWeb satellites. And then in the second deployment, we'll, we'll deploy the additional 10 on OneWeb satellites on today's flight. Below the payload fairing, we have the second stage. It has a Merlin vacuum or MVAC engine that's used to take the 21 spacecraft uh, into low Earth orbit. The MVAC that we're flying today is the, uh, has a shortened nozzle. And we'll get a pretty good look at that following stage separation. The shortened nozzle made its debut on Transporter 7 and will continue to be used on missions that require less performance. Now, the bottom two thirds of the vehicle is called the first stage. It's also referred to as the booster. And at its very bottom, we've got those nine Merlin 1D engines that'll get Falcon 9 off the ground, off the launch pad, and into the thinner parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Shortly after the liftoff, the first and second stages will separate from one another, and then the second stage will continue to orbit while the first stage will start making its way back down to planet Earth. Now, the first stage is designed to be reflown with minimal refurbishment between flights. In fact, today's first stage is flying for its 11th time, and we will be attempting a landing on our drone ship named, of course, I Still Love You. It's out in the Pacific Ocean, about 650 kilometers downrange. And if we're successful, that'll mark the 193rd recovery of an orbital-class rocket. Now, today's launch consists of two primary customers. We've got both Iridium and OneWeb aboard. Iridium is a global satellite communications company, and they provide access to voice and data services anywhere on planet Earth. Now, for our longtime viewers, you may know that SpaceX completed a series of eight launches for Iridium that completed back in 2019. But here, four years later, we're happy to be working with Iridium again to send another upgraded five spare satellites into space. These extra satellites will increase Iridium's constellation's resiliency, bringing the number of spare satellites in orbit to 14 and their total constellation size to 80 satellites. So with that, let's learn a little bit more about Iridium and the satellites that they're flying on Falcon 9 today. Innovation. Versatility. Safety. Resilience. These are just a few of the words that represent Iridium. Millions of people know they can trust Iridium to connect them to and from anywhere on the planet every day. As a result, when family, friends, and colleagues venture off the grid, including to the world's most dangerous environments, they choose to stay connected with Iridium. And some are researching climate change, 
Combating poaching, cleaning plastic from the oceans, and ensuring critical aid can be safely delivered to those in need. This is what Iridium was made for. Most important, Iridium is a lifeline for those in dire situations, and it remains the only satellite network that lets you send out an SOS from anywhere on Earth. We take this responsibility and the trust placed in Iridium very seriously. Our upgraded satellite constellation, packed with redundancy in space and on the ground, is a testament to our unwavering commitment to those relying on us today and the millions more to come in the years ahead. The original Iridium satellite constellation lasted over 20 years, well beyond what was expected. We designed our latest constellation to even higher standards with even more flexibility. That's why today, you can expect Iridium to continue delivering the highest quality service in any weather condition across the whole planet well into the next decade and beyond. Quite simply, there is no network like Iridium. Now, OneWeb is also a main customer on today's mission. Today's launch will actually mark OneWeb's 19th overall and their fourth launch with SpaceX. Once these 16 OneWeb satellites on board the second stage deploy, it'll bring their constellation to 634 satellites in total. Now, among these 16 satellites, there's also a special demonstration satellite named JoeySat. It's going to test an innovative beam hopping capability, allowing satellites to switch the direction and strength of signals based on customer needs or demands. Here's some extra information about OneWeb and the payloads they're flying today. Think for a moment about what connectivity brings you. Is it helping you manage or grow a business, stay in contact with family and friends? Is it giving you or your family access to education or to a doctor? Is it opening doors for you to a world beyond your horizon? Of course, for many of us in big cities and large and established communities, it's doing that every day. It's essential, fundamental, it's enabling our lives. From connectivity flows a better quality of life, new horizons and greater opportunities. So what can we do to help ensure everybody can experience the benefits of connectivity? This is the OneWeb mission, to bridge that digital divide, to serve businesses and rural communities, to further scientific understanding and collaboration. And we're doing this by bringing high-speed broadband internet from space to places where this opportunity was previously unimaginable. Every customer connected via the OneWeb network has their own story. All of them are united by one thing, gaining the power of connectivity and the independence or sense of community that can bring. OneWeb Launch 19 with SpaceX will fly 15 satellites into our LEO constellation. In addition, a 16th satellite will be included that we have called JoeySat. JoeySat is a demonstration satellite which incorporates several features, sets, to be included in OneWeb's next generation constellation, including beam hopping technology, hence the name Joey. This satellite has been developed alongside our partners at Satixfy through our Sunrise program funded by the European Space Agency and the UK Space Agency. We can't wait to see it in space. Go OneWeb. Now we're just about T minus five minutes away from our launch attempt today. Next major milestone will actually be for the transporter erector. You can actually make it out on your screen. It's that truss looking structure to the right of the vehicle. On the TE, we've got clamps around the top yeah, of the second stage. Uh, actually, call out there on the loops that we're pressing for strong back retract. So, strong back, the strong back is another way that we refer to the transporter erector. We're going to be opening up the clamp arms around the top of the vehicle, and then the transporter erector will begin to recline away from Falcon 9. Now, the TE is actually what uh, we route the propellant loading and electrical connections to the vehicle with, and it's actually how we also raise Falcon 9 into this vertical launch position. And as we get to the T minus zero mark, the ground hydraulic systems will pull the TE away even further, clearing the way for Falcon 9's liftoff. At this point, the clamp arms should be in the process of opening. 
if it wasn't so foggy, you'd be able to see it underneath the top of the vehicle there. But we can actually start to make out Falcon 9's features here at the very top of the vehicle. You can see the fairing where we've got the 21 satellites today. That white bit below it is the second stage. And then the uh, sooty bit below that is Falcon 9's first stage. Now, the first stage is connected to the launch mount at the very base of the TE, but the transporter erector is a hinge structure and retracts away from the vehicle in preparation for launch. We've actually begun the Stromback retract sequence. You can see it beginning to pull away from the vehicle there. That'll complete uh, just under three, T minus three minutes. Taking a quick look at propellants, we are fully we are fully loaded on our RP-1 kerosene fuel on both the first and second stage. And we are completing up liquid oxygen loading stage on both the first complete. and second stages. Call out there that stage one liquid oxygen loading is complete. When propellants are fully loaded, we'll have about a million pounds of our fuel and oxidizer on board. And propellant loading sequence, uh, we started that around the T-minus 35-minute mark. There was a go-no-go no go poll from the ground team there to step into it. So now we're finishing up propellant loading on the first stage. And on the second stage, uh, we'll expect to complete that in about the next 30 seconds. And we're starting to get better and better views, clearer views of Falcon 9. Vandenberg, of course, famous for the fog that tends to roll in from the coast and uh, blanket the launch site in uh, nice layers of clouds. Thankfully, though, the launch weather continues to look fantastic for today's launch attempt. And of course, uh, Falcon 9 has onboard cameras, so if we do end up going today, we will probably get some pretty fantastic views of the California coast and that fog rolled over on the Vandenberg line, uh, coastline. Stage two, lock flow complete. So call out there that propellant loading is complete on both the first and second stages. Coming up, we may see some venting from the transporter erector. You can see uh, a plume of gas there coming out. We're just clearing out the lines on the transporter erector there in preparation for launch. Next major milestone will come up at the T minus 60 second mark. That'll be where Falcon 9 transitions into startup, that meaning its flight computers will have taken over the launch countdown. And then at T minus two seconds, we'll ignite those Merlin 1D engines in preparation for liftoff. Payloads continuing to look healthy for today's launch attempt. Falcon 9 is in startup. And with that, Falcon 9 has transitioned into startup. Weather is looking good. Range is ready to support. Next major milestone will be... Launch abort has started. And it sounds as though it looks like we have the clock has held. I believe I heard a launch abort was called. Now, launch abort is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, at the point that we are underneath T minus 60 seconds, uh, Falcon or the ground team can call an abort uh, if they see something that doesn't look quite right. So we're going to listen in to the loops a little bit here, see if we can find out more. Bear with us a moment. And on countdown one, this is a launch director um, we've awarded, currently uh, evaluating uh, vehicle remains.
Hey, welcome back, folks. Now, if you've been following along, you know that we had an abort called uh, just under the T minus 60 second mark. The launch director called out an, uh, an abort, um, but the ground teams are still investigating what happened there. Now, keep in mind the purpose of a countdown is to help us catch potential issues prior to flight. There are many, many ways that a launch can go wrong, and only one way that it can go right. And given that, we are very cautious on the ground. And if the team or the vehicle sees anything that looks slightly off, we stop the countdown and try again another day. Now, again, the vehicle and the payload remain in good health. But unfortunately, this will end our launch attempt for today. We do have a backup opportunity tomorrow, just a little bit earlier at 6.15 AM Pacific. We hope you'll join us for that one. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you for the next attempt.